Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Deja Vu Fragments of Memory, which is a new game on Kickstarter right now, and I'm going to be doing a two-player run through it so you can see what it's all about, decide if you might want to back it. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel, so if I make any rules goofs, you know what they are. Okay, have you done so? And welcome to the Cosmos! And everybody say hi to the Star Princess here. Here she is actually on the board, this cute little uh, Star Princess meeple. Now, here's the problem. The Star Princess has forgotten who she is. She has lost her memory. And we players are friendly cosmic spirits who are going to try to help her remember who she is. Because we're just awesome that way. And so, to set the game up, we have to build the Cosmos board. And everybody takes turn putting tiles down, ensuring that every tile touches at least two other tiles to create this kind of network, this maze uh, that the Star Princess can travel around. Also, each player has a starting hand of three memory cards. So here's my three three. Here's Jen's three. We actually draw five and then discard down to three. So this is what I ended up. So I really like purple memories and green memories. Jen, well, I don't know exactly what she's got, but we'll probably find out pretty soon. And uh, also, each one of these cosmic tiles is peppered with memory fragments and, oh, I can never remember what the little charms are. The, oh, what are they called? Impressions. Uh, memory impressions. And you just kind of scatter them all around randomly. Each one gets one fragment and four impressions. And then we also put all the common memory cards out on display. And that's it. We are ready to go. And how does this work? Well, I'll be the first player. And on your turn, the main thing you're going to do is pick a tile, grab all the impressions off of it, and then start seeding them in a, you know, a sequence to adjacent ones. So I could like draw up this yellow here, and then, I don't know, this blue here, and then this white here, and then this purple here. So I just kind of strung them along here. And the last place you go, you get to pick up all the tokens that match the color. So I drop these off, and that means I get to collect a purple moon and a purple raindrop. Now, that's not actually what I'm going to do, because I should really think about this. That was just kind of a random example. Um, and to decide which one I should actually activate and grab, well, these are basically targets. I'm trying to collect, in a perfect world, two pur purple stars, or a purple star, a purple moon, a purple lightning bolt, or a green star, water droplet, and lightning bolt. Uh, because those are the ideal things to be able to complete these memories and uh, score points and unlock special powers. So, how can I do that? How can I do this so that I could get two purple stars, I say, or... Now, although I don't have to, I could complete this with two green stars, or a green and a blue star. But if I use purple stars on the purple memory, I'll get bonus points. One point for every matching color, plus however many points the card itself is worth. So ideally, I want two purple stars. Let's see, so there's a purple star. So if I could get this purple star over here, or this one over here, I could pick up both of them and complete this, which will give me three points and a star flower. Um, although, ideally, I'd like to do this, because this special power is really, really cool. So, uh, uh, purple lightning bolt, purple star, purple moon. <sighs> Ooh, look at that. There's a purple moon and a purple star right there. Okay. I just need to get a purple lightning bolt there. And, okay, so here's one. So, if I pick up these and then uh, drop them off, can I, let's see, so that'd be, I pick them up, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, no, I can't quite do it. Um, oh, there's another one. So if I pick these up and go one, two, three, and I cannot do it. Shoot, that would be perfect to just pick up all the purples for this and score this card immediately. But I can't do it. But you know what I can do? I can actually try to set things up to, d to achieve that on a future round. So let's say I go on ahead and I start here with the star. I could pick any location. It doesn't have to be the star princess. But I'll pick these up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them off. And I'm going to try to put this lightning bolt in a place where, in a future turn, I'd be able to get that lightning bolt over here to get all the things I need. In the meantime, I'll try to get some other stuff. Like, okay, well, what do I need? Um, if I end with this, let's see. There's a, hmm. That one's not particularly exciting. Maybe I should go with the other one. Because this one has some stars. Because if I get two stars, I could complete this card. And this, yeah. But I'd want this to end in a place where there's another blue star while dropping off this purple along the way. So we'll get close to there. Where are the other blue stars? Where are my blue stars at? Uh, no, I do not see any good options. They're both right there. Shoot. All righty. Um, well, no. 
Oh, oh yeah. Okay, no, I will go with this. All right, I think this is good. This is good. All right, so I'm gonna, I, I choose this tile, take all the pieces off it, and now I'm going to string them around from space to space. And the last place I drop, I will get everything of the color that matches that. One, two, three, four. Perfect. I will go, oh, I don't know, uh, here. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four. Let's see. But, okay. But I'm dropping this off, which means there's going to be five here, and I want to make sure on my next turn that I, I'd be able to be five steps away from over here. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, that's not good. All right, um, if I come over here, one, two, three, yeah. Okay, so I dropped this off here, and then I dropped that off there. There we go, because from here, this is one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, perfect. So next turn, I'll activate this and get the purple over there. But anyway, and so I dropped that, I dropped this blue lightning bolt, and now I drop this. And hey, look at this. I just picked up all these greens. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, boom. Now. So that was the main thing. You know, I picked up, I've redistributed some of these impressions, and now I have to use these. Any of these I don't use right now, I lose. Um, although, at the beginning of the game, the Star Princess does have one treasure chest. So I can temporarily store one of these to carry over to the next round, but I need to use the rest of them. So the main things you can use these for are completing cards. Like I already showed you the ones I've got in my hand, but instead of completing these, I could try to complete these public ones that are worth uh, all of these give me more bonus points at the end of the game. Like if I were to collect this using three water drops, then at the end of the game, the more green memories I've recalled, the more points I can score. As an example, as opposed to say this one over here. This is worth 18 points. It'll cost me two suns and um, two stars, but it'll be worth 18 points for every set of memory fragments I get with the same value but different colors. So, I mean, these are all different in-game objective tiles. So, um, now, none of them, I, I can't pick up any of them with two stars, a moon, and a sun. But, remember, I did want this one. This requires, uh, yeah, this requires two stars. So, I'm going to recall this. Although, unfortunately, I'm using green stars instead of purple. So, that means I don't get bonus points. If I'd use purple stars, I'd get one, two. If I'd use two, but I didn't. I just used these. But hey, I will still get three points at the end of the game. And in the meantime, I've given myself a flower, a star flower. Okay, now, but I've still got these. So, that's a problem. Hmm, um, what am I going to do with them? Well, I can only store one. Uh, although, wait, no, that's not true. Because, okay, I cannot complete in either of these other ones with this uh, green sun and green moon. But if I wanted to, I could get started on something. Hmm. Although, yeah, that's a little bit less than ideal too. I could basically go like this and put the green moon here. This is long-term memory where I've completed cards. This is short-term memory where I'm working on cards that are incomplete. At the beginning of the game, I can only have one card in my short-term memory. But if I put that over there, then I won't be throwing that away. And now I've still got this one. I could go on ahead and store it on the treasure chest for some turn in the future. And so now I'm a third of the way done. Now all I need is a lightning bolt and a star. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, not okay because I forgot one very important rule about working on cards in short-term memory. They have to go from the top down. This is a moon. If I want to start working on this, I have to start out with a lightning bolt, and I did not collect one. So this won't work either. So tell you what, okay, let's take a step back. Um, Start over again with what I've actually got. I haven't actually collected this star flower yet. Um, I've got these in my hand. I think what I'll do instead is I'll put this one in the uh, short term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be um, now, even though I could finish it, I'm not going to finish it right now. Um, but hey, I'm starting to work on it. Hopefully, I'll get a purple star um, before too long so that I can actually use a proper color and score a bonus point off of that. And then that leaves me with these other three. And again, I can't start working on either of those because they both require lightning bolts. Uh, I didn't get any lightning bolts. So what I'm going to do with these three greens instead is trade them in on the Star Princess card. You can see right here, at any given time, you can give up any three um, of these tokens, no matter what their color, no matter what their shape, to get a Star Flower. So, 
Rather than getting this thing complete to get a star flower and score three points, I'll just get a star flower right here by spending these three. Now, whenever you use one of these impression tokens to, uh, to do anything, basically, they get discarded over here to what is called the memory hive. And over time, as you imagine, this is going to get filled up with more and more of these tokens. Eventually, when it gets completely full, they will all come back into the game and reseed all the different areas in the cosmos. So, um, you know, the game never gets, you know, completely empty. Uh, once enough of them are out, they'll all start coming back in, uh, randomly repopulating more. Memory impressions will pop up all over the place. So anyway, so that was an alternate way to go. I collected four. I only used one of them. It's a less than ideal color usage, but hey, I'm starting to work on this. And then the other three gave me a, a uh, star flower. Now, what do you do with these star flowers? Well, that comes into the other core thing you can do on your turn, which is move the princess around and have her plant these flowers. On your turn, either before or after you do the picking up and spreading around of the impression tokens, you can move her as many spaces as you're allowed by your current cards. At the beginning of the game, on my turn, I could move her one space. If I eventually get a card, like say, you know, Jen's got this card, and she might get this. If if uh, Jen gets this card built, she can move the Star Princess two spaces on her turn. But anyway, I, now I can only move her one, although I don't have to move her at all. Um, and uh, wherever I end up, if I've got a Star Flower, I can plant it on that space to collect a memory fragment. Each of these spaces has a memory fragment. Um, now, memory fragments are of no value at all by themselves, but at the end of the game, they can be worth a lot of points if they're combined with these cards up there. Oh, and you know what? I just realized. I didn't put those out right. Not that it really matters, but all of these have a numeric value and they create this big um, visual landscape. So let me go ahead and put these down here correctly just to have this set up right. Again, functionally, it doesn't matter. You can put them out however you want. But as you can see, they make a nice landscape picture, which is true for all of the color of cards. Because there's an interesting thing. At the end of the game, you can score bonus points if you have actually collected cards such that you make a nice little landscape picture like that. Um, like at the end of the game, if I have cards uh, five and seven, then you know there's nothing particularly bonus, but if I have cards five, six, and seven, for every place where I've connected two matching cards to make a full memory picture, I score bonus points, two bonus points off of that. So anyway, so uh, well, I was talking about these. The thing of them is these each are worth bonus points. At the most of the cards give us some kind of special power and a few points. These give us a lot of points at the end of the game, depending for the most part on what type of memory fragments we've collected. Like if I get this one, which is going to require that I spend uh, two moons and two stars, um, this will make every one of these shape memory fragments, these blue ones, are worth five points if I get them in a straight. You know, like a two, three, four. You can see, here's the two, and here's the... Let's see, where's the... Here's the one over there, here's the two, here's the three, there's the four, and there's the five. You know, so if I get all of those plus this, that's 25 points I could get. But you know, this particular shape of memory fragment, the blue one, it's scattered all over the place. But there's other ones as well. Um, like this one is just, hey, get two points for every memory fragment, straight up, and try to collect as many as you can. But this one's pretty cool. This one is just worth a flat 18 points if I've got one of each of the memory fragments of the three shapes, the yellow, the dark blue, and the light blue, that all have the same value. So the, uh, now to build this, I need two suns and two stars. But in the meantime, that might be a good thing to go for because I think since I've got this flower, I just you know paid three tokens for it, I might as well use it and grab one of the fragments. So what am I going to grab? Now, I don't have to move her. I could just leave her right here and grab this one. But no, I, let's see. Although, yeah, if I grab this one, which is the size two, where's the other twos? Um, let's see here. The, the yellow two is over here, so that's fairly close. And the dark blue two is over there. So, I mean, actually, that's not bad. I, you know, if I grab that and then I move over here and get this and then this, that's pretty nice. Okay, so even though I could move the um, princess if I wanted. I'm not going to. I'm just going to have her stand still and I'm going to use this flower 
to collect this memory fragment, which again, you know, it's the light blue number two by itself. It's not worth anything, but combined with some of these cards, it could be worth a lot of points. So basically I, um, I converted the three tokens I turned into a flower and then planted that flower. Oops. Uh, planted the flower right here to get this memory fragment. The first one I have collected. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, uh, now that was the end of my turn. And at the end of my turn, I've still got two cards in my hand. And, oh, first of all, at the end of my turn, all the tokens that I used, they come over here to the memory hive. And now I can discard any cards in my hand because I'm going to refill my hand back up to my limit of three. Now, I don't want to get rid of this because I like purples. Um, because, hey, this is the purple three. This is the purple five. If I can find a purple four and get them all in play, I'll have a three, four, five straight, and that'll be worth a bunch of points. So, um, you know, and over here is the purple two. So I also, since I'm working on the purple three, I want to collect this thing so that I've got bonus points because, as you can see, they line up quite nicely. And then this means I get more points the more purples I make. So I definitely want to keep the purple. But the question is, do I want to keep the green? Um, because, you know, if I discard this, that means I'll get to draw two cards. Um, and maybe I'll get some more purples and go for that straight. Or, you know what, maybe I should try to collect multiple colors. Um, you know, because it's unlikely if I'm only going to draw a couple cards, I'll get another purple. It's a big old deck full of cards. So, um, do I get rid of this green to try and get more purples into my hand and really kind of monopolize purple? Well, the thing is... I like this green. I like this special power it offers me. Heck, if I could get both of these built, I would get this uh, special power twice. This special power has to do with the white tokens, which are wild cards. They're very, very powerful. So while I probably should get rid of this to try and double down on purple, um, I think there's the phone. Um, hold on, everybody. We'll be right back. Okay, so where was I? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, redrawing, redrawing. So, do I keep them both? Because I really want to double down. Nah, it, it's, it, it's not entirely reasonable to expect you're going to get through the whole game with only one color. So I'll just keep them, draw another, and all right, I'm very happy. Now I can start specializing in greens, the same way I'm specializing in purples. All right, so that is it, the end of my turn. Hooray! And now it is Jen's turn. Although, actually, before I continue, um, so I know you're watching this on your screen. You might be a little concerned that these purple tokens are kind of hard to spot on camera. Um, I've actually talked to the developer, and he says he's actually planning a different, lighter shade of purple that won't quite disappear into the cosmos quite so much. This is just a trick of the camera. Me sitting here at the table, I can see the purples very, very clearly. They really pop. But I appreciate, though, that, you know, it might be kind of an issue in, in lower light conditions or with the camera overhead like this. But anyway, yeah, so my purples are still here. Those purples are there. But yeah, just bear in mind, uh, that's not going to be a problem with the real shipping game. And anyway, let's continue on. It is now Jen's turn. And what is she after? Well, she'd like to get some blues. She'd like to get some greens. And ideally, she'd like to get something built all at once. I see, and she's got uh, green number four and number six and blue number one. Um, oh, which means she'll want to get blue, or I'm sorry, no. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, so green number one is out there. So she needs to find some more greens. But she also needs to think about if she gets one of these built, what power does she want? The ability to move the Star Princess around more. The ability to have two cards in short-term memory instead of one. Like, I've already got one. I'm, you know, having multiple cards you're working on at once can give you a lot of flexibility. Or the ability to have another treasure chest um, so that you can store multiple things. So, um, let's see here. Well... If she looks around, could she pull off either of these? Okay, there's uh, there's two greens here. Uh, it's a moon. And yeah, so if she could get a green lightning bolt there, she could pick them all up and finish this just like that. So, And there's a green lightning bolt right there. And there's one over here. So which one is he? From this group, it'd be one, two... One, two, three, that wouldn't work, but she could go one, two, three. No, that wouldn't work. From this group, she could go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. So I think that's what it is. Jen's going to want to get this memory reconstructed by collecting them. So she'll grab all of these. And now she's planning on ending on this space with the green lightning bolt. So working backwards from that, where does she want to put these? Knowing she's got from here go like one, two, three, four, or... Um, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. It's got to be something like that. 
Hmm. Because, you know, while all, she, all that matters right now is this, she is creating other opportunities down the road. Like, if she puts this pink here, that makes this a more attractive place to go and pick up two pink tokens at once. Um, right. So, and right now, it's interesting, there's nothing on this zone right here, so it might be worthwhile to put something there. So, yeah, I think Jen will just go one to who, join in the pink, three, and four. So that's where she ended up. She collects these three greens, and now she's got to use them. She's got a plan in mind. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so she is finished. She has created this. At the end of the turn, she'll do all of this business. And um, she scored four points. But because she used three greens and that matches the color, she gets three bonus points as well. So she really got seven points off of this card. Plus, now, if she wants to move the Star Princess, which she could do right now if she wanted, she can move her two spaces. Although, if she doesn't get herself a Star Flower, she doesn't care where the Star Princess is. Although she could always, every turn, she, if she wants, she can move it. And if she figures out what I'm trying to do, she might just move the Star Princess off to the far end of the cosmos, away from where I want to go. But until I pick up a second thing, Jen doesn't really have a firm idea of whether I'm trying to get a, a suite of these or whatever it might be. So, Jen could move the Star Princess. She's not going to bother. She's built this. She got three bonus points because she used the greens. And now at the end of her turn, she's got to decide. Is she going to discard either of these? Nah, she'll keep them. Let's see what the new card is. That's another blue. She's very happy with that. Oh, and she really likes this one. This increases her hand size if she gets that made. So very, very cool. Back to me, back to my turn. And so what do I want to do? Well, I would like to pick up a star of any color, although ideally purple, to get this thing finished. Because hey, when I do it, it'll immediately give me another star flower, which I could then get planted to continue collecting stuff. So that would be nice. And let's see here. Oh, but right. Oh, remember, my whole plan, my whole plan was to get the purples over there so that I could get this thing made in one fell swoop. So let's see if I can still do that. Because, interestingly, Jen has changed things up. There are more tokens here now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I activate this, I got to move six spaces to land over here to get the purples. Let's see, and if I go like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, oh no. All right, so here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I can do it. I just got to kind of go this wild and crazy route. So let's finish what I started on the last turn. All righty. So I know, right, what was it that I want to end with? Um, I want to end up with this lightning bolt over here. And I'm starting from over here, and I got to go one, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, yeah, All right. So just going to go whippity windy like that. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. So how do I drop these off? You know, if I put this pink here, this is becoming a very, very big and um, attractive pinkish, reddish uh, collection of icons, which Jen might grab or I might grab on a future turn. Hmm. Or. Or. Yeah, with that, I'll, I'll go with that. And let's go on ahead and drop a white over there. And let's put. A white over here and a blue over here, creating a little collection of blue and a purple over there. So this is like a nice collection of purples right here now. Three tokens. And then boom, I end up here and I collect these purples. And boom, just like that, Bob's your uncle. I've collected the three I needed and I'll score three bonus points for having done this. So I just scored six points. These all come over here to the hive, which is slowly filling up before too long. We'll have to return all of these to the cosmos. And I've now given myself a special power. And this special power has to do with the white or wild card pieces. Basically, the deal with them is the last um, token you put on the cosmos cannot be white. Uh, you always have to end with something else. That's why, you know, when, when I just did, I dropped off some whites along the way there, but you cannot end with a wild card placement, which means you can never say, oh, I'll, I'll end with the white card and take a whole bunch of wild cards because that'd be too powerful. You drop wild cards along the way. But here's the thing from now on, whenever I'm dropping stuff off, if I end 
on a, a tile that has white wildcard pieces on it, I'll pick up whatever I'm supposed to be. If I end over here with a pink, hey, I'll get these two pinks, and I will get to take one white as well. So that gives me a lot of flexibility. And the great thing about them are, there's two things. One, they're considered in any color. So if I put them over here, it'll count as purple. And they're also the way I can get bonus points for completing these. I could complete this with any color of um, suns and stars, but I'd like to do them with white to get bonus points. So anyway, so that was it. I have completed this. This is still in my short-term memory, still being worked on. And um, I could move the princess around, and I might as well. Um, you know, even though I'm not going to pick anything up, I can move without and, right, because I'm planning, or no, I was planning, where was I planning on going? Oh, I'll move her over here, because ultimately I'm planning on getting both of these and finishing that. All right, so that was my turn. And now at the end of my turn, I'm not going to discard these. I'm going to hope to pull another green or purple. And oh my gosh, I did. Wow, okay. That's pretty nice. Um, so, th And this will be great because, hey, if I get these built, this is purple 5 and purple 6, which means I score two bonus points for having a connector, for having connected um, you know, that big picture. So that was my turn, and now it is Jen's turn again, as you can see. There's a lot of stuff starting to build up there. And what are we going to do? So... Uh, you know, well, Jen wants to get one of these done. Uh, I think she'd like to get this one done because this will increase her hand size. She'll have a hand size of four instead of three. That's a big deal. Is there a place? Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at all these blues over here. There's the, the moon and the sun. It just needs a star. So can we get a blue star over there um, so that Jen could complete this? Here's both blue stars right there. That's one, two, three, four. So if Jen goes... Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, Jen can, from here, she could go one, two, three, four. So there she will go. And how is she going to work this? She wants to end with a star over here. And uh, along the way, what will she drop off? She will, uh, she'll drop a blue over here and uh, white over here and a purple over there, creating a little set of purples right there. All righty. So that's that, and Jen picks up all of these blues. She's got the blues. And to have cr created this, um, which means she used that, that, and that. Cool. And um, so she scored four points plus three more. Yay! for using the three correct colors. And she's got this. Now, unfortunately, it's a lightning bolt. So it's not like she could start working on any of these because she would have needed to have a uh, water droplet or a star. So this one, it's OK. She'll just go on ahead and store it in storage. She'll find a use for it later. And in the meantime, all right, so the hive continues to fill. Bippity boppity boo. And Jen is going to decide um, yeah, there's no reason. I mean, she likes greens and blues, so she'll keep both of those. And But her hand size is now four, so she's going to draw back up two. Ah, the first pinkish red and a yellow. So Jen's not excited about either of those. But still, they're not bad. I mean, this increases because we're another place you can store stuff. And the more stuff you can store, if you store a whole bunch of things, it makes it uh, much easier to go for something like this, which is worth 20 points and gives you a star flower if you've got one of everything. Boom. Um, you know, or, or you know, one of everything and then one more. So, uh, you know, it's tough to get that. But, you know, if you're storing a bunch of stuff, it makes it easier to go for big targets like that. Um, oh, and this is another opportunity for Jen to have more things she's working on at once because this gives her more short-term memory. So that was the end of her turn. It is my turn again. I would like to continue working on purples or start working on greens. Um, let's see, there's a nice big, uh, but, but oh, but here's the other thing, remember, now that I've got this power, I wanna make sure the last place I go has um, some white tokens on it so that I can collect them as well by using this power. And let's see, plus I also wanna get another star flower so that I can plant it once I get over here and over here so that I can collect those, um, right. So what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? I want to make sure I end um, over here, or here, 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 here. There's two purples there, which is a lightning bolt and a water drop, two of the three things I need. So if I end over here with the purple moon, um, which means here, because one purple moon's over, but here's the... So if I end here with this group, 
Or if I use this group and end here, I'll be able to get everything I need for this, and I'll be able to pick up a white as well that I could use to finish this. If I pick up that white star, that's perfect. So this is what I want to do. But can I do it? There's five tokens here. Can I get here in five? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I can. Let's do it to it, Pruitt. All righty. So this is how I'm going to end. Um, so I can pick all that stuff up. And before then, let's say, oh, I, I dropped that there, and that there, and that there. And I'm just going backwards. But anyway, so that's how I drop stuff off. I pick all the stuff I want. One, two, three, four, five, and I get all the purples. I like purple. And uh, because of my power, I get to take, oh, sorry, princess, sorry. I get to take one white. I'll take this one. And let's get to work. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, shoot. Oh, right. Yeah, because it's this one. Bing, bong, boom. Three of the correct color is three more bonus points. Yeehaw. Plus four points. Plus, this is a five and six, so there's two points there. And I've still got this star. I could store it for later, but what the heck. Let's go on ahead and use it now, which scores me one point because this is considered a purple. So I got one bonus point off of this. And all of these fill up the hive. And this is now complete, which means, hey, I can move the star princess farther, and I got another flower. Um, right. Oh, these are going to go at the end of my turn because my turn's not over. I got another flower. Let's go on and have move the princess right over here and plant this flower to get my second fragment. And now Jen can see, oops, sorry, princess. Jen can see what I'm trying to do. I've got two different colors of two. She knows I want to get this. Um, so now Jen could go on ahead and build this herself to keep those 18 points from me or try to get her own memory fragments. Although, heck, in a two-player game, just building it and never getting any memory fragments is worth. Although, if she takes that, then well, I'll just have to try and get something else that can turn these into points. If nothing else, if I just make this one, every single one of them is worth two points, but I could hopefully do better than that. But anyway, so I've signaled my intentions. Um, I scored another point. I, I've got another power. I've scored points. And now, hey, look at this. The hive is full. It's in fact, it's overflowing. Um, and which means at the end of a player's turn, when the hive is full or overflowing, before they refill their hand, they've got to empty the hive. So let's go, everybody. And the way this works is... Basically, um, I start taking these and randomly um, start filling in cosmoses. First of all, anything that doesn't have anything, any, anything that has no impressions, gets one. So here's an impression over here, and here's an impression over here, and there's no other empties. Now, everything that has one gets a second. So again, just picking randomly, there's one. And here's one over here. And here's one over here. Very difficult to reach around the camera. All right, do I have any more? Um, right. So all the doubles are filled. Now we start filling in the triples. Triple, triple, triple. Wow, that's totally random. That's a lot of blues over there. That's looking pretty good. And a triple, and a triple, and a triple. All right, well, that's fine. Now I'll drop that one randomly. And now, are any more triples before we move on to quadruple? Oh, there's another triple over here. All right, so oh, and another triple over here. All right. Oh, yeah, we're doing triples. Right. Oh, we made up triples, so now we're doing quadruples. Um, so uh, I don't have enough to fill all the quadruples. Since this is my turn, I get to choose where these last ones goes as I fill up the uh, triples and turn them into quadruples. I mean, I mean actually, purples are there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I do not have six. So I get to choose where these four go. Um, you know, and now obviously I need to be thinking about strategically, what am I trying to build? I want green. So I want to make big enclaves of green. So let's go on ahead and put it, although, but here's the problem. I put this green here, Jen gets first dibs on it. Um, and I don't know if Jen has, I mean, I know Jen likes green cards. So if I do this, she might go for it. But st if she doesn't, that's going to, I mean, I'm, I'm still hoping to get it anyway. So I'll put that there and, um, and I'll make, uh, I'll build up some more greens over there. And let's see, another triple. I'll build another uh, clutch of purples over here in this nebula over here. And then one more. Where's another triple? I'll uh, just go ahead and put this over here. All right, there we go. And now at the end of my turn, I still only have hands. I'm going to keep these because I like greens. And I got a yellow now. 
All right, so that was the end of my turn. It is now Jen's turn. She's got four cards. She now knows what I'm... If she's paying attention, she knows what I'm after. And, I mean, either before or after her main action, she could move... She knows I want that. So, it might... Although, fortunately for me, I just uh, doubled my speed too. So, if, if I hadn't gotten that extra speed, Jen could... You know, she could be spending... Oh, let's have the princess move back over here. Oh, for no reason. I just want her to stay away from there. But now, everything Jen can do, I can... So, Jen cannot move her away from this next turn. I can get there. But the problem is, yeah, I can get there, but can I make a flower to do it to complete the last one? Is Jen going to try and do that? Or is she going to try and build this before I do? Or is she not going to go for those kind of things and instead just try to push her own agenda um, because she's got this one, this blue one, that she wants to go with her blue two because, again, that makes a lovely little picture there. And she wants to keep on scoring more points. Now, the game is going to continue going like this until somebody has built, if I recall correctly, 10. Let me double check that. I think it's once somebody has um, restored 10 cards, that triggers the end of the game. And every other player gets one more turn. Uh, oh, for heaven's sakes, rules. Where is it? Uh, yeah, when there are 10 or more impression cards in a player's long-term memory, that triggers the end of the game. And then that's when we tally everything up. All the points we've scored throughout, the points for these, and the points that we might get for these things that we've built, and the points for connectors. And um, yeah, folks, that is just a brief um, sojourn into the world of Deja Vu Fragments of Memory. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.